Today we're looking at a Lincoln tombstone that might already be six feet under. Can we fix it? Can we save it? Let's find out. So I picked this up yesterday for 50 bucks. I was actually just looking for welding leads for another welder. And I saw this piled up. This is just the power cord though. The leads are original, but it looks like somebody put a new power cord on it. So that has me suspicious of, did they short something out, connect it up wrong? I don't know. It had wheels on the side, but one of them was bent over. You can see what a fantastic job that is. You know, if you got to learn how to weld, you got to learn how to weld somewhere. But I don't think my first place would, to weld would be on the machine itself. So maybe they shorted something out. I don't know. The welding up here looks like it was done a long time ago and is actually a lot better. So let's just open it up, see what's going on. Well, actually, maybe I'll show you guys what it's doing. Yeah, let's do that. So I've owned and worked on and fixed up at least a dozen of these things. Um, and the first weird thing is, is when you power it on, this is the big switch, clunk switch. Usually you get a huge transformer hum and a fan going on. So we'll plug it in. They've got a, a 30 amp. This would be what would be on like an American electric dryer. So plug that in. There's nothing. So the switch is off. But if we flip it on, there's... I can kind of hear a fan spinning, but it seems like it's spinning at a quarter speed, if that. And there's just a very, very, very light hum. Really not what it should be. Got it on 90 amps, and this is all you get. I mean, this isn't even, like, this isn't even scary. So, I'm, we'll turn it all the way up to 225. Uh, we're really getting nothing. I'm not getting a great ground between my pieces, but that's definitely not powerful. So it almost feels like it's running on just 120 volts, like half what it should be. I don't know. We gotta we gotta open it up. So this one is probably these have been the same since the 60s or something. Sometime in the 60s that could be a little bit off they only had they only went up to 180 amps and sometimes late 60s 70 something they started doing 220 and they're identical from the 70s until the ones you can go buy at the home depot or wherever today um the uh way i kind of usually tell off the bat the age is if they're usually in the 80s and 90s these little things are actually like uh, plastic plugs they were white and i think they went to black plastic plugs in the 2000s or something so this is probably in the 70s i could probably look at the date and see there's a date code this is 507 so that would be um the seventh month and five it could be 75 or 85 i'm gonna assume 75 so 1975 seventh month um on the back how to open these up there's just a bunch of screws and it's been opened up before because all the screws have been changed because they've changed this main power cord. So this bolt right here is actually the this thing is welded over the top of it. So I don't even know if that will come completely out. But that kind of lets me believe that welding on the machine itself might have killed it. So this back, the cord was replaced, and then they started welding on it. Okay, what surprises await us? And looks like a typical Lincoln welder, like they all look. Oh, wow, that's just scary. Go oh, good heck. Okay, if you know anything about electrical wiring, this is gonna scare you, because this is just bad. Um, so the switch right here is supposed to run your full 240 volts through. So we have a green and the black as our power wires. And the white wire over here is just connected to the frame. Look at this. Is it? 
can't believe I plugged this thing in. This thing is dangerous. And let's see if I can zoom you guys in. Let's see if that helps. Do you guys see that? Okay. I'm going to give this guy the benefit of the doubt. And maybe he just used his the green wire as one of the hots. Um, so you're going to have hot hot. So this is going to be 120 volts. That's going to be 120 volts. Across them is 240 volts. This is just ground. So usually you'd use green for that. Um, in this scenario where you just had a three wire, you would use like white and black. So let's open it up and see what he did. No, I should not have given him the benefit of the doubt. He has the green wired correctly on here, white and black. Bad, so bad. So he has a hot. So there's a full 120 volts touching the side of the case. So if you touch this and ground like maybe you're standing outside you would be shocked you'd be electrocuted um actually i'm glad i didn't actually touch um one of the electro i mean i could have been shocked actually if i touched the case and this metal plate i actually had this sitting on a metal plate so my bad i guess i didn't think about that because the this should all be grounded but nope um that's bad that's really bad the windings all look good. Um, nothing looks overheated, melted. Now, just a, on a little side note for you guys, there's this misconception that these older units had copper windings. They have always been aluminum, and they're aluminum today, and they were aluminum all the way back as far as they go. There was a welder that came before this um, that did have copper wire or windings, but th these are all aluminum. Not that that's a bad thing because they never burn up. So I've never seen one of these burn up. So that's good. I think it's just wiring job. That's just ridiculous. So when you change switches, all you're doing is connecting to a different spot. We got a little bit of burning right here, which is probably 90 amps, 100 amps, which is the most commonly used. On this machine, generally you're going to use like these four. You're going to use 75, 90, 100, 115. You're going to go right in there and that's all that ever gets used on these. So essentially the whole machine was running off of 120 volts. Which now if you want to know if you can run your uh, 240 volt Lincoln Tombstone welder off of 120 volts. Nope, can't. Doesn't work. Doesn't work at all. So while I was in here, cleaned up the contacts a little bit. You just take some really fine sandpaper, just kind of touch them. So they weren't bad at all. Uh, I installed a proper cord. This technically isn't the right cord. This is a uh, 30 amp dryer cord. This should have a 50 amp, like NEMA 50 on it. One of these is what it would have came with, but everybody likes the converter over the dryer cords because then you already have 240 volts. Every American household has 240 volts in the house with the dryer cord. Everything looks good in there. I think the wiring was just crap and I have never ever seen one of these burn out. Um, they just don't burn up. So we'll put it back together with this wrong cord that is might just stay on it and we'll see if it actually works now. You should hear, I haven't flipped it on yet, I should hear a boom and like a good hum. Apparently the fan is hitting something. Apparently the uh, two inch screws that whoever took off the back glass and I'm putting back in, one was too long it was, so it was hitting the fan. Just plug it back in, let's try it again. Oh, sounds beautiful. 90 amps, got some 6013. My welding helmet on, welding glove, and my welding flip flops on right now. So see what we can do
It welds. Um, the end of that rod was uh, very crowded, so it took me a minute to get it started, but I should be able to show you guys. 90 amps, a little cold for that, but I want to see. I guess let's crank it up to 115 is quite a lot for that, but. I bought this just to steal the leads off of it because the guy said it was dead. He bought it from somebody else and he was going to fix them or something. He used to fix them, he said, or something else like that. But there's some, he thinks the transformer shorted out. So he's just selling it off and it had extra long leads and extra long power cord. Turns out the leads are the exact same length they come with. They're the original leads. Just the power cord was longer. And the people just wired it wrong. So I'm actually going to clean it up. Might as well just, let's just paint it. These are super easy to refurbish. Do something about the wheel kit. I always like putting a wheel kit on them. They're heavy as snot without wheels. Put a wheel kit, put these on somehow, clean them up, put a patch or something over that. Just strip it down really fast. Paint it nice and pretty red. And it got another 45 years of life left in it. It'll never die. It got a hundred years life left in it. So that was such Swiss cheese. I just made a uh, 14 gauge plate, which is about a 16th of an inch thick and put that over, trimmed up the thing a little bit. And we just welded that down to it. Ground the welds down a little bit for this, but um, we'll just leave them for that. And then I bent over the back side of this little plate just a little bit so we can still get the back off, but it adds more rigidity right there. Yeah, time for some paint. Um, threw a little bit of Bondo on some of the bigger little dings. Uh, not perfect, just, well, it was never perfect from the factory. They had little dings and dents all over, but we got the both wheels mounted on and it deserves a lick of paint to make it look as good as it works. So let's paint it up. I'll, you guys will come back in just a second, throw down some red oxide primer, um, just out of a rattle can over the bare spots and then just some Rust-Oleum red over the top of it. There we go. Just let that dry up. It'll take a while being a uh, oil-based paint, Rust-Oleum. There's still dings and dents, but I mean, some areas I tried to get flatter than others. It's not perfect, but we don't need to be perfect. It's a welder. It just looks fantastic now. You can see that plate didn't hurt, turn out half bad. Can't even really tell it's not supposed to be there. Covers up all those big old booger welds. I took a minute and cleaned up the electrode holder and dismantled and completely 
took out the pin and just completely cleaned up the ground clamp. The spring was a little bit loose. Tighten that up. So that works like new now. That's actually, both of them are actually original. Okay, we got a small welding job. This is a uh, wheelchair lift mechanism. You can see the arm right there. And somebody aftermarket mounted a winch to it. And it needs a fair lead. You can see that it's wearing out the winch cables running right on there, which is not good. So I'm just gonna put a fair lead and I just need to weld it right in these little two grooves that I made. So let's do this. I just have a uh, pipe on a rod that goes right there and I put a little groove for the cable to ride in. Acts kind of like a bearing. It's not a high speed thing. Would that have been easier with MIG? Absolutely. But should that stop you from going out and just buying a $50 welder? No. Get out there. Buy one of these things. If you don't have a welder, go spend the 50 bucks. Get one of these things. Go buy the one of the $100 Harbor Freight little wire feed things. So you can plug it in your 110 outlet and use that. You need a welder. Wheels nice. Big wheels. That actually makes a big difference. Say something funny. Hey, why'd the dog cross the road? Huh? Get the frisbee! Get it.